Jonathan Kellerman, I trusted you. How can you deceive me? I read all of your books and love them mostly. And you did this to me on the sixth day of Hanukkah? Aloha and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Marilyn Maya, the baby boomer booktuber, or as I like to say, the oldest person on booktube. It's not really true though, I've been looking around. Welcome to my wrap up. It's been a very disappointing month for my reading. Um, I've been reading a lot of psychological mysteries, which I love, but I'm getting really tired of the bad endings, etc. But let's start first with what I said in my teaser, which is about Jonathan Kellerman. The book is Over the Edge, and it was written in 1987. So I gave him a little bit of leeway about the way he was portraying people. But uh, the first part, let me just say it's written wonderfully. I mean, he's a wonderful writer. And uh, the book, let me just tell you what it's about. The case begins with a maniacal middle of the night call from a young former patient of Alex Delaware's. Within hours, the teenager has been arrested at the scene of the mutilation murders of his mentor and lover and an anonymous street hustler. The case is not as nearly as simple as it seems. Uh, and this uh, reviewer said, perhaps the best of Kellerman's book, a triumph, complex plot, twists, believable characters, etc. Um, I have to kind of disagree with some of that. Uh, the first half was great. Everything that the reviewer said, it was, uh, the plot was just wonderful, was laid out great. But as I, as it got to the middle, I really began to dislike the gratuitous violence, especially of gays and trans people. And like I said, I gave him leeway but it was getting to be ridiculous, especially since some of the evil characters, a lot of them were portrayed as belonging to a gay kind of motorcycle gang. And um, I did not like that. But like I said, I kept on reading it. And then I realized, that, uh, without telling you exactly what's going on, there's a lot of, um, triggering for people with mental illness as well as like I said um, a lot of gay phobia a lot of um, hatred which might be real at that time in every time but um, I think he overdid it um, and the plot at the when he sums things up at the end um, the evil characters who turn out to be uh, the culprits are portrayed as all bad, which I don't appreciate. I like characters that are multifaceted, even evil ones, even murderers, you know, and everybody is sort of uh, portrayed as one-sided, uh, maybe except for a few characters. Like I said, the writing is terrific, but um, then there's another thing. There's an afterward. So I said, okay, he made an afterwards in the early 2000s. So he's probably going to say, I'm sorry for portraying, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, times were different then. And, you know, I thought he was going to make some kind of apology. No, it was a love letter to himself and uh, how he's such a wonderful writer and how this book was the beginning of his wonderful career. And this is a very intelligent, you know, uh, Jonathan Kellerman is a very intelligent person. He was really a child psychologist. So, I, you know, he knows what he's talking about. But I think he let uh, some of his uh, biases uh, get in the way of the plot. And even though his best friend Milo, who I usually love in this uh, case, and I love him here too, though he wasn't as much part of the um, book as he is in other books. Um, it, it just wasn't good enough um, that, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, portrayed as well as it usually is, and it wasn't enough to compensate for the 
the gay bashing and et cetera and misrepresentation of mental illness. So even though I said that this would be a five-star five read, I have to take out a lot of stars and give it two stars just for the, the writing itself. Not even for the plot, you know, the plot wasn't that wonderful as it went toward the end either. But the concept, I can see why a lot of people thought it, it was great for its time. So that's my rant against Jonathan Kellerman and the book Over the Edge. Next uh, is Watching from the Dark, a novel by Gaitha Lodge. She write, uh, author of She Lies in Wait, which I had DNF'd for now because um, this looked more interesting. And there's a lot of praise for that book, She Lies in Wait. I haven't seen uh, much for this. So let me read you some of the blurb. When a vibrant young woman is murdered while on a video chat, a small-time detective wades into a circle of friends and lovers with dangerous secrets. At Aiden Poole logs onto his laptop late at night to Skype his girlfriend Zoe. To his horror, he realizes that there is someone else in her flat. Aiden can only listen to the sounds of a violent struggle taking place in the bathroom and then the sound of silence. He is desperate to find out if Zoe is okay. But then why is he so hesitant to call the police? This is a very good concept. It's written in uh, double points of view. One of the dead woman, uh, which is interesting. And the other from the police. Now this one says the small town uh, police, but actually there's more than one uh, person who's investigating this, so it's kind of misread. I suppose that the woman uh, detective would be that person that they mention who's investigating, but there's actually uh, more than one person. Okay, let me tell you the good parts first. The good parts is it's a very tightly uh, plotted novel. Um, it's it's interesting. I mean, I read it all the way through, but not without stopping and saying, hmm, this is wrong. This is wrong. Sorry, I'm looking at a cat in my yard right now. So, <laughs> excuse me for that, but there's a cat that comes around and I just wanted to see if he would come closer. Okay, so I thought that women in this book were not portrayed well. Um, I think every woman, without exception in this book, is portrayed as weak, as mentally ill, as um, obsessive romance. And there's a lot of trigger warnings uh, about uh, bulimia or uh, Eating, eating disorders and also mental health triggers as well. Um, I, the bad part about it beside that is the ending was too wrapped up. Everything was wrapped up in a tidy bowl. And you know, when you come to mental illness and uh, people with anger issues and even murderers, things don't get wrapped up that easily. I didn't like the characters and I think maybe part of that was because um, this book was made, I guess, to be read by a younger audience. I'm not saying it's YA, but I think it's, um, all the characters were in their 20s. And um, more so, I would think that they were more liberated, you know, and more, have more feminism uh, instilled in them, and yet, they were all so uh, old-fashioned and, um, I can't say all so old-fashioned, but they were all like involved in, like love is everything, you know? And that's kind of coming from my time more than I thought it was from the younger generation. Uh, but, so I gave it a three stars because she is a good writer and uh, the, it was 
the structure was, it was structured well, and it made you want to keep on reading. But no, I didn't like the characters. The, the person who, uh, the main character, Zoe, who, um, who was murdered in the first, you know, I'm not giving away anything, so she was murdered from the start. Uh, she has a lot of emotional and mental problems. And um, I don't think it was handled as well as it could have been. Even when told from her voice, I couldn't get a good sense of who she really was. So anyway, uh, three stars. Then we go to Val McDermott, who usually um, I like. You know, I like her writing. And I'll give you a little blurb. It's four in the morning, mid-December, and snow blankets St. Andrew's School. Student Alex Gilby and his three best friends are staggering home from, the, from a party when they stumble upon the body of a young woman. Rosie Duff has been raped, stabbed, and left for dead in the ancient Pictish Cemetery, and the only suspects are the four young students stained with her blood. I don't know how to say this uh, any better than saying it's overwritten and it could have used a good editor to take out a third of this. Um, a lot of it became boring um, and the fact that there wasn't many female characters in this book uh, made it even more boring for me. I don't even really know what the title means, A Distant Echo. Um, however, it is written well. Um, I wasn't interested in the four male characters that much. I mean, maybe some readers will, and maybe this is only my personal opinion that I was bored, but I'm sure that a lot of people might, who like Val McDermott, um, might enjoy this book. It uh, but for me, it was two and a half stars. I hope I didn't say my next book is Shirley by Charlotte Bronte. And I have to say that I did not read it, but I want to, but I have to bring it back from the li to the library. And I looked on my library website and they do not have this in a large print. So I might be forced to go online and buy this book because I, I like slow books. Um, another booktuber mentioned to me that compared to Jane Eyre, this is a very slow book. That doesn't bother me. I like the first page. And um, it's about two women in the uh, Victorian age, one who is uh, a tutor, and the other is rich and how their lives intertwine. I think that's what it's about. Um, but I cannot read this kind of print. I don't know, it's, it has to be, even with my glasses, it's just too small. So I'm gonna put this on the side. But I really don't want to put it on the side until Victober because the first lines were really interesting. And I heard it was about their, uh, uh, it was sort of about their sister, Emily Bronte. And I read both of Emily Bronte's books and I really liked them. So I hope to get to this before too long. My next book is a five star read. Can you believe it? Finally, finally, I waited a long time for this book from the library. I was like 40 on the list and I finally got it and I, I have to bring it back to the library. So I'm definitely gonna buy this. It's called Wow, No Thank You by Samantha Irby. And she's hilarious. Um, I usually don't like books and essays and I don't read them usually in a linear fashion. Um, and I haven't read all of the essays but what I've read is just great. I'm just going to give you a little uh, taste of her, um, her book. Um, Samantha Irby is 40 and increasingly uncomfortable in her own skin, despite what inspirational Instagram infographics have promised her. This is the life of a Hallmark Channel dream. She goes on bad dates with new friends, spend weeks in Los Angeles, taking meetings with TV executives, amateur astrologers while being a cheese fry eating, slightly damp Midwestern person with neck pain and no cartilage in her knees who still hides behind past due bills under her pillow. I tell you the truth, when I read this, I thought she was my age because she's only 40? 
Oh my goodness. Let me just read you a few lines that crack me up. It's called body negativity. And I'm really into this subject um, because I think with body negativity comes self-hatred. Uh, at least it did for me. So body negativity. I have been stuck with a smelly, actively decaying body that I never asked for. And I'm constantly on the receiving end of confusing, overwhelming messages for how to properly care for and feed it. And then she goes into all the parts of our bodies, starting with hair. And um, I'll just read you a little taste of it. Let's talk about glowing skin. I don't drink water and my blood type is pizza, but my skin looks good from a distance, mostly because I put three different oils on it and occasionally rinse off my blush before bed. Your face skin needs to be smooth, yet subtle, yet stretched like a fresh canvas. And you're supposed to pretend that you haven't thought about it since you were 19. You have to clean it, shave it, perimenopause gang represent, tone it, then use a treatment on it, then press a serum into it, then moisturize it, then screen it from the sun. And bitch, are you kidding me? That is just the skin on your effing face. She didn't say effing face. And I have a story to tell you about my use or non-use of bad language. When I was four, I came home from school and I asked my mother, Mommy, what is motherfucker mean? She didn't say anything, but she dragged me to the bathroom by my arms or was it by my hair? I can't remember. But I do remember that she took out a big bar of laundry soap. And if anybody's older than 50, they might remember the taste, smell, of laundry soap when people used to wash their clothes by hand. Anyway, she washed out my mouth with it and I never said a dirty word to her or anyone else for a long time. In fact, I've never said a bad word to my children and they've never said a curse word to me. So um, saying bad words uh, is very difficult for me. And uh, I like to use my partner's word, shiitake mushrooms, for shit. But I've got to the point where I can say shit, but um, it's difficult. And if you're a person who doesn't like words, a lot of cursing, I still say read this book because it's great. It's wonderful. I love it. And I am going to buy this book and I'm going to annotate the shiitake mushrooms out of it. So five stars. I'm going to end this with a book that I picked up last time uh, called Meditations to Heal Your Life, which was on my shelf for a long time. And uh, I haven't read it for a long time. But being that this is Hanukkah, a time of light in the world and peace, I'm going to read Peace Begins With Me, and I hope that you enjoy it. Peace begins with me. If I want to live in a peaceful world, then it's up to me to make sure I'm a peaceful person. No matter how others behave, I keep peace in my heart. I declare peace in the midst of chaos or madness. I surround all difficult situations with peace and love. I send thoughts of peace to all troubled people, to all troubled parts of the world. If I want the world to change for the better, then I need to change the way I see the world. I am now willing to see life in a very positive way. I know that peace begins with my own thoughts. I am connected with like-minded, peaceful thinking people. Today, we will help bring peace and plenty to our world. So I'm bringing peace and love to my booktube friends here. And I hope that you will subscribe if you like this video and want to see more of me and my weird goings on. Um, 
please subscribe, like, share, press the notification bell. And until next time, on the sixth day of Hanukkah, I wish you peace.